Hello, what's up guys? Welcome back with me and Jeeves in our journeys into Staratas Metaverse. Just yesterday in Hippocryptic event, we have all the team leaders from Staratas, from the DAO, DAC, entrepreneurs, all are together talking about the opportunities in Staratas Metaverse. I'm recording that one for all of you guys and girls here. So check this out. Hey, Interstellar Alliance, I, I don't see you. I know you said that you're in here. Can you request to speak? Yeah, I don't even see Interstellar in here. I don't either. He said he can hear me, though, so I know he's here. <laughs> mm. Okay, doesn't work. Okay, so. Okay, Weird. I'll pull. Okay. Eganot, he said you could represent them. You feel okay with that? <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll just go ahead and. Oh, wait, one second, sorry. Sorry, this is the first time I'm hosting spaces, so I'm just trying to figure out how it all works. Bear with me for just a second. Um, I'm missing a couple, but I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. And then when they show up, I'll pull them up as well. All right, cool. So, hello, everybody. Um, so everybody calls me Hippo, but my name's actually Ash, and you're more than welcome to just go ahead and call me that. Um, I currently do the recaps of the Star Atlas Town Halls, and I, I'm sorry, people are messaging me. Um, and I receive a lot of questions from people that are interested in Star Atlas, but like they're kind of intimidated by it. They don't really know where to get started, or like they just flat out don't get it. So I kind of want to just hold to hold this space to maybe like. Ah, I'm sorry, people are DMing me to kind of just help people get an idea of like what Star Atlas is. Um, so if there's anyone in the audience that has any questions, like please feel free to raise your hand. We'll go ahead and bring you up. Um, yeah, so one second, someone just popped up. Do you guys see it last year in here? Anybody? Let me pull you up. Hold on one second. What was the question again? Do you guys see up? Do you see it? Does anybody see it last year? I don't see him. He says he's in here though. Hi, Santi. <laughs> Hi, Santi. Hello. Can you Hello. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I'm just trying you? to figure out. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm just trying to figure out how to pull everybody up. There's a lot of people that okay. were supposed to be speakers, but they, they don't seem to see them any in here. So 
And we'll just go ahead and get started. And then if they show up in here, I will pull them up. So again, hello everybody. My name's Hippo. You're more than welcome to call me Ash. That's my real name. Um, I currently do the recaps of Star Atlas Town Halls and I receive a lot of questions from people who are like interested in Star Atlas, but like, but they're intimidated and they don't really know where to get started or like they just, like they don't get it. So if, again, if anybody in the audience has a question, feel free to raise your hand and I'll bring you up, right? Um, so I know that we've all heard like Mike's vision of Star Atlas, right? Like that's, that's kind of why we're all here. That's what drew us all in. Um, but I'm really interested to know what other people, like what gets everybody else excited for the game? Um, especially those who are already building the communities like within the ecosystems. So I want to help share with you guys, or I want, I want to help share what you guys see, like what motivated you all to become a part of the Star Atlas community. Like for me, I know I was really interested in digital fashion and meta, the metaverse as a whole. And that's actually where I heard about Star Atlas was from, from someone in the Luxo Discord. And like, once I found out about it, I immediately just got sucked in. Right. It was the first time I could actually visualize like all that the metaverse could be. And then like with it being space theme, it really like pulled at my like space nerd heartstrings a little bit. And so I've also worked with gamers in the past. And I really think that blockchain gaming has the potential to revolutionize the gaming industry. Like, I think that this is going to be one of the biggest draws to bring non crypto natives into the crypto space. So I would just love to really hear. I don't know what you guys have to say about that. We have a lot of interesting people on stage. We do. Yeah, there's a lot of... We have Atlas Theory here, man. How are you? Doing well, man. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yeah. When are we going to do the, the beer, beer testing in, in Norway? <laughs> uh, whatever you want. Come on over. Yeah, yeah, man, I should go. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I want to get in on beer testing in Norway. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can come as well, of course. We'll have a Star Atlas uh, group party. We, we are thinking of funding even a, a guild related to beer in Norway. So that's yeah. that's, how, <laughs> that's how we are planning this stuff. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> I'll go ahead and fly my uh, Calico Hero over there. I'll, I'll be there in like an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No doubt. Yeah. So we also have the Final Frontier, Metaverse Nomads, Egon Act, Moon Man, and Dreaming Dragon. A lot of different people from different guilds. Yeah. I don't know if you have something planned, Ash. Well, I just kind of wanted to have, I guess, a, like just a casual conversation to ch just check in like with what people are thinking about, like how Star Atlas is or what people are thinking about Star Atlas. Like I said, I get a lot of people that question, like sending me questions. They don't really know. They don't really understand. And so I just kind of want to help other people maybe that are newer to Star Atlas or don't really know what's going on with it. Um, understand kind of like the vision or like what people who are actually in the game and building the current communities, I want to help them like see what it is that they're doing or what it is that the vision that they see. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. That's a great idea. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. How are you guys today? Good. Hey, are... man. I'm good. It's, it's Ardo, by the way. Hey, Ardo, man. How are you doing, man? Busy as usual. I don't think I ever have a uh, downtime. Yeah, I know. I know that you're busy. Guys, let me tell you to all the audience, Arto is building. He's in building mode, right? That's right. That is right. Yeah, man. I can tell. I can tell. Yes, I know. I actually just read, I was going through their... Um, was it your white paper token or your white paper, your economic white paper that you guys put out, Ardo? And yes, yes, it was uh, that was a day and night, night and day uh, operation to, to get that finished and, and vetted and um, and put out to the world. 
Uh, of course, even our original white paper is as well, which is for our organizational structure. But um, I hope you love to read. <laughs> I do, definitely. No, it, it's there's a lot of great information in that regarding your guys' guild. Absolutely. Why don't like? Yeah, thank you. Why yeah. don't we go like in round and start with Atlas Theory, tell, telling us a little bit about. Amarna, is that the correct pronunciation of your guild? And, and then everybody tell us a, a little bit about every single guild. We, I know that we are going to have you guys in the in the town halls, but let's make a little bit of a spoiler here if you want. If that's okay. Yeah, sounds good to me. Um, and yes, it is um, Amarna. Um, Amarna. Yeah. So I'm Atlas Theory, at least that's my like personality. Um, my real name's Aaron and I'm the leader of uh, the Amarna Group, which is a uh, metaverse entertainment company and Star Atlas DAC. Um, I really want to explore what uh, media and all forms means in the metaverse. So I thought I would surround myself with um, like-minded people. So yeah, I'm trying to Uh, grow a community of uh, artists, editors, 3D modeling, uh, producers, just a vast array of people to um, kind of explore, have fun, and uh, also enjoy the game. That's great. Amarna also has a, a nickname that you guys say to Amarna, right? Was it like the Metaverse Hollywood or something like that? Yeah, that's kind of our vision is to become the the Hollywood or new Hollywood, Hollywood of the metaverse. Um, and we're going to do that by a lot of um, DAOs and sub DAOs that kind of serve as what would be um, studio houses today. Cool, cool. That's dope. That's a great vision. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. And also to Norway as well. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to be any more clear about that. <laughs> no, seriously. Come on. Under. <laughs> Come on. <under>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, Ash, Ash, if you have any comments. Um, no, like, I just, I think that that's great what they are doing. Like, I, I think that it, um, with the, the, it's Armana, is that correct? Am I saying yeah, that Yeah, Armana. Mm -hmm. Armana. So I think that what that does is it, with the Armana Guild is because it's going to be the like the Hollywood theme is it kind of opens up that there's more than just there's more opportunity to others than just like being hardcore gamers right mm -hmm. yeah exactly I yeah I wanted to so like I said just a bunch of creators and I enjoy talking to um, people that have visions and stories and just a lore that they want to create and I, I'd rather do that together so yeah that's kind of the the main core group mm -hmm. you also have a really great YouTube channel with a lot of um, great information on Star Atlas as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much yeah um, yeah I started it uh, Atlas Theory I want to um, continue in more base level Um, really attracting new players and uh, kind of building a community and giving them like a, an entry point, I guess, into uh, the metaverse. Awesome. I know. I think that that's great. Uh, so I guess, how is it that you, I'm sorry, I'm getting all these notifications. Sorry. <laughs> how, is, <laughs> how is it that you got started in Star Atlas? Like, what is it? What? I guess what what's your story? What inspired you to, or what is the vision that you see with Star Atlas? Uh, well, like you, first it was the uh, the space <laughs> that kind of drew me in. Um, <laughs> but I, I've always been into sci-fi. Um, you know, reading iRobot. You know, Isaac Asimov. Just thinking of space and uh, kind of what the future holds. So. Yeah, I think that's kind of where it got me. And um, why am I spacing the name right now? Anyways, um, I guess the metaverse posters and the lore there when I first started to look into uh, Star Atlas kind of brought me in even further as I guess as a storyteller. So 
as far as our atlas that's what it is as far as the metaverse i've always had like you know little ideas of everyone being connected and then you know of course i read and eventually watched uh yeah ready player one so that's kind of where <laughs> once i heard the term metaverse from star atlas i was like okay now i'm locked in <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean it definitely sucked me in <laughs> yeah, pretty sure um i guess let's see do are we do you, santi do you think we should just go like in a as in a row <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Anyone can chime in into conversation. Yeah, I guess if anybody like has something to say, just like chime on in. Yeah. Like I'd love to hear course. all of your opinions, like what it is that you guys are creating and again, like what what is it that you ultimately see like with this game? Just, you know, trying to like give maybe some people who don't fully understand what it is or what to expect from it. Just help help give them a little bit more knowledge on it. <laughs> All right, yeah, um, I'll definitely chime in. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, we can. All right, so um, I am Ardo. Uh, some of you might know me by my real name. Um, most of you probably don't, because I try to keep this Greek with that in the metaverse. But um, what attracted me to Star Atlas was actually, uh, it was the, the rebirth event. Uh, it was the videos of Atlas Theory, and then I got caught in what I call the Morgan Freeman effect of listening to Michael Wagner talk. And um, his he has a, a commanding tone that just makes you wanna listen. And the more you listen, you're like, this guy really has it put together. And so I, you know, start diving in and I, I was just, I was sold. And next thing you know, I had a poster and then I had a couple. <laughs> so, um but what final frontier starting as a dream of guys who have been playing mmo and rpg games for over a decade um again i wanted to bring that industrial revolution to the metaverse but also the aspect of logistics because it's a part of our everyday lives nothing we do revolves without logistics but also operational security for those deep space missions. And then just to be able to enjoy the commerce amongst each other in terms of allies and partners and friends. Mm -hmm. And so we've grown so fast, but we're doing so well because we maintain an ethical environment and one built around security protocols and layers of security um, so that my members are protected because ultimately um, I bear the weight of that responsibility for the welfare of the Final Frontier community. And um, a month ago, we had maybe 25 members. We're now over 200 strong with over 1,500 people across the whole Final Frontier community. And we, we have our officers, we have senior members, we have an intel department, logistics, operations, aviation, communications, marketing and development, research and development, uh, blockchain development. So we're very well thorough. And it. I wanted us to be the environment that, um, that represented Star Atlas in a good way. And um, I, hope, I hope we're doing our job. I mean, you I definitely then. think you guys are, yeah. Everything that I've seen put out so far has been like top notch. <laughs> Yeah, that's something that people need to need to understand, like the importance of the DAX and guilds in Star in, in the side Star Atlas is huge. Like the, the impact that a guild and a DAX could have is, is limitless. Like the metaverse is going to be for everybody and and guilds and DAX are, are the organization for me right now. And if you're early, you of course you will have more benefits. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody got a chance to see the news of, of the UMO, which stands for the United Metaverse Organizations. And we released the document that we all signed, which is called the United Metaverse Accords. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were really excited to do that. I know it was a big shocker to the metaverse. Um, there might've been a few people that had some alphas on that, 
<laughs> but uh, thank you, uh, Hippo, for, for spreading the word about it. Thank you, Santi. And um, thank you to the whole Starless community. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about that if you want. Yeah, so right now it's it's 12 organizations and growing of most of the largest DAX inside of Star Atlas that decided to come together for a common ethical cause of commerce, um, original trade, uh, knowledge sharing, intel sharing, to work on logistics together, and also to perform multi-DAC missions together. And then if it comes to it, protect one another. So we do have part of the accord that states an attack against one is an attack against us all. And there will be a highly coordinated effort to protect other organizations within the UMO. And um, when we go out into the medium and hard sectors of space, I, I encourage guild leaders to think of safety in numbers. Right. Um, I know there's going to be small groups that want to go out and explore, and that's fine. But again, um, strength is in numbers mm -hmm. and also understanding that being able to get those benefits of the other factions or being able to have that trade and relationships with other factions, you got to understand those four currencies of the world. Yeah, I just heard you talk about those actually on like Atlas Theory's YouTube channel. I thought that that was really interesting. Yeah, um, and, and we um, we elaborated a little bit on our, our first Medium article that released a couple days ago. And the order of those is it's time, knowledge, relationships, and money. And everybody, and I see it across the metaverse already, it's, it's about how much money can I make in Star Atlas. Mm -hmm. But if you do the three first correctly, the money will be there as a derivative. And it relies on you doing the first three correctly. Take your time to knowledge share, build those relationships between different guilds, different factions, partnerships exterior to the metaverse that you can bring inside of the metaverse and the money will be there. It's that simple. The Atlas and the Polis will be there. Yeah, that's, that's a great, great vision. Yeah, that is a great vision. <laughs> yeah, it is. Who else? Like, do we have anyone else here that signed the UMO uh, agreement? I know that we have Metaverse Nomads. I think at last. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Sorry, can I was having an issue. Apparently, the the microphone capability only works on the phone app. So I was trying to yeah, do it on my desktop. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, so we are not a part of the United Metaverse Accords yet, although there is a vote tomorrow. Uh, and also, for those listening, my name is Don Kane. I'm the leader of the Alessio family. Uh, there is a vote, vote tomorrow uh, among the Alliance to see if the Alessio family is going to be allowed to join. Oh, that, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, I mean, again, to the audience, like, the things happening amongst, amongst guilds, and all the environment, like the guild environment, is growing at a very, very fast pace. You need to stay updated like every day. I take a lot of time to stay updated on everything because there's a lot happening. And I highly encourage everyone to, to be to be attentive of what's happening with the guilds because there are some huge things forming right now. Huge things that will be part of the history of the Star Atlas Metaverse. And I feel like this, this conversation could be one of them because there, there hasn't been any conversation like with different guild leaders at the same time yet to the public, at least. So this is huge as well. Thanks, Ash, for, for putting it together. You're welcome. <laughs> well, and I noticed that the amount of guilds, they seem to be growing like by the day, right? Or yeah. it's like you're adding a new guild almost every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we receive a lot of guild listing uh, tickets, uh, mm -hmm. like every day, at least like two or three. We're trying to filter a little bit, but yeah, there are more things coming on on, on, on guild recruitment and on guild on the guild environment as a whole. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, to spoil or alpha leak anything, but we're going to, we are putting a lot of thought 
and time into that uh, because we know that it is growing like crazy so we want to keep up <laughs> we need to keep up that that's also something right like the, the guilds are also setting the standard for the for star atlas as a whole and that's great you guys put us to work man that, that's <laughs> that's real that's real yeah santa you've been a, a big help and and we, we can't thank you enough for what you've done for the star atlas and the metaverse community and um and, and yes uh we we do encourage uh other DAX to apply for the UMO. Uh, at Lesios folks coming up. Uh, Armada Group is a part of it. Interstellar Alliance, uh, Solian Style, Equinox, um, BSA. I mean, we could go down the list. Yeah. And so um, there are a couple alphas I could leak, but um, I'm going to hold out on that one. I don't want to lose my council seat in the UMO. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's, that's, that's. That's great, man. Uh, thank you for your words. We have yes. also here as well, Metaverse Nomad, Segonac. Guys, tell hey. us, tell us. Is yeah, hey, Santi. Hey. hey, Santi. Hey, Ash. Uh, thanks for putting Hi. this together. Uh, this is Banjo, one of the six members of Metaverse Nomads, also one of the council members of Rome, uh, which is a Metaverse guild in, in uh, Star Atlas, of course. And really, uh, the Council of Rome came together as people who were just interested in crypto and gaming had a long history of, of both. Uh, and we're looking for projects to get involved with. And, and honestly, the first project that we really sunk our teeth into, we started to become really frustrated. And what brought us to Star Atlas is really the dev team. I mean, we all love the space games. We're, we're all MMO gamers in our hearts, but it was Wagner uh, and the town halls and the white papers and the econ papers that really brought us in and allowed us to see what's possible. Um, and all of us are different levels of entrepreneurs or businessmen. And when we invest in games like Star Atlas or other projects, we're also looking to see how we can, you know, <clears throat> use the tide to rise, lift all the ships and, and really find ways to maximize our capital. And we, we found Starless to be the one that gave us the best vision of that. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, we created Rome to bring a community of like-minded people together. And, and I'm proud to say today, we just hit a thousand members on our Discord. Oh, uh, and that's really, uh, thank you. Thank you, Santi. Thank you, Ash. Um, and it's really a reflection of the idea that we built the structure to allow, um, scale right we, we've been studying other games we've been looking into other projects and trying to understand what made them successful and what didn't um, trying to understand and strategize about what we should do uh, what relationships we should or should not make up front and really trying to see <clears throat> who we can bring in to maximize you know the, not only the value of the people who play for us but the people that we partner with as well so at the end of the day, what we're looking to do is really create an international guild. Um, we just brought in a rather significant group of people from South America and Mexico. Cool. And we're also looking to other continents as well to bring those people in. And it kind of follows the model of the Legion concept of Rome. So our ultimate goal is really to <clears throat> stake our place in the metaverse, Star Atlas specifically, um, and be a, a force for the end game of Star Atlas. And as it stands to relationships and alliances and things like that, right now we're in a wait and see posture. We're kind of just waiting to see what comes about um, until we see where the alliances really need to be made before we make any decisions to go forward. The strategy. Nice. Oh, the game's played, man. We've been playing the game yeah. for months now behind the scenes. And this is all stuff we, we love to talk about. For those who don't know, we have a weekly podcast that we put on every Sunday. And we're just guys that love to talk about the games. You know, we've had Santi on, we've, we've uh, asked Ash on, I think she's confirmed now. Uh, and we yes. just love to talk about all things uh, metaverse. We talk about some other projects, but you know, there's different discords and different guilds that have a multi-game focus or a single game focus. And we're 99% we're, we're Star Atlas. We talk about a few other things that we are invested in but we're not strategizing and playing those games right now, so. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I joined the, the Metaverse Nomad pro, uh, podcast and it is great. 
as I said in the town hall, I recommend everyone to to go and give it a listen. It's it's a, it's it's great, and you can catch up on everything related to metaverse. Not only like Star Atlas, but other moves like other games. Uh, you, as you said, like the main focus is in Star Atlas, but you need to know what's happening around. So that's good. That's good. Yeah, and I'll just go to say, Santi, to that point. Uh, part of our intention by sharing. Uh, other games and, and we really don't spend too much time in it for people who've seen we, we spend most of our time on star atlas but you know the the dev company that we left and we kind of abandoned because of their community culture we want them to see what it really looks like to show up uh, as a dev team in a company and i, I got to tell you the star atlas team's rocking it out of the park thank you thank you so i don't know if anyone wants to chime in uh, I haven't heard from Egonite, Lloyd, or Jim, Dream Dragon. Hello, hello. Can you see me? Yeah, we can. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anish. Thank you, Santi, for this time and this space. Uh, I just want to echo Banjo. I think that the Star Atlas team is an inspiration. It is certainly one of the reasons why I've personally dedicated uh, much time to to this effort. I guess going a little bit into myself, I'm a longtime EVE Online player. And I've always wondered what it would be like to be able to gain real world value from spending a time in universes as deep and as rich as Eve Online was, and I presume continues to be. However, I think what we're finding here, especially as the, the months roll on, is things like Star Atlas could mean a major paradigm shift in what it means to be working as a human on planet Earth. And as Michael Wagner himself often alludes to, Star Atlas is building tools that could be experiments in new socio-political structures for humanity itself. And I think that that's quite exciting. It is, let me tell you, man. It is. I love to hear Michael's interviews. He, he has a great point. And when he says that we could onboard like a, a billion people here and that the metaverse could be the the biggest employer in the world. That's true. I mean, that's really true. And if that's what you see that is being formed right now, like we are so early and all the, if you dive deep into the community, in the Star Atlas community, you see that this is already, the, the bases are being founded right now. So yeah, and, and by all of you guys who are here listening and who are here speaking as well. Okay, I got a question for Yaganat. This is um, this is Banjo again, man. Uh, coming from Eve and knowing what you know, the I guess the culture of Eve became over time. Do you see that trend? Do you see that happening in uh, Star Atlas as well? I've been thinking about that question uh, for quite a long time. Uh, it's interesting because there, as people may well know, I'll just sort of inform generally. There's a lot of um, sort of double play in EVE Online and has a very uh, backstabby type of culture. And there's been a lot of discussion in the Star Atlas community about what the addition of real world value to a universe as rich and as detailed as EVE Online uh, would mean. And so I think that that is something that, you know, we'll see. It's, it's essentially my current thoughts on that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's where my head's at too, man. I, I, I'm in the, of the mindset that human nature is going to come into play much stronger when there's real money involved. And I, I know, you know, in gaming, you have the ability to hide behind an avatar and some of us put our faces out there more than others. Uh, but when you read the stories of Eve and, and you think about, is that a, a possibility in Star Atlas? It feels like it could go in that direction. And I know there's, there's some people who want this really utopian ideal uh, in Star Atlas, but then I think there's other people who kind of have a sense of realism of what could be coming. Yeah, that's why you need to pick, like, to take your time to make the decision of joining a, the correct deal for you. That's really important. The right people to join and to play with. Mm -hmm, exactly. Do you think so, that... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, do you think that the benefit is there's a benefit to joining a guild as soon as like as early as possible or do you think because i know a lot there's a lot of people that are still kind of hesitant and waiting and watching to see what develops 
I'm just wondering what the benefits would be to join a guild, like say now, rather than when the mini game rolls out or even later than that. So I feel like networking is going to be a big part uh, of the Stratless metaverse uh, and, and life inside the metaverse. Mm -hmm. You need to start to, to, to know people and to make yourself a name. You need to be like, like Banjo said, uh, mm -hmm. you can backstab someone and hide behind an avatar. So if you, you need to convince people, for example, that you are not going to do that by building a name for yourself, for example. So I feel like being active in the, in the community and join a guild early and you, you can take your time. I mean, there's, there are a lot of guilds right now and you probably could find, if you take your time, you could find the best one to join. But mm -hmm. it's really important to, to make some networking right now to know people and to start getting involved so that you will have already an advantage in the game when the game comes because you, you will have friends, you will have a you will have your squad already. So that's why I think it's important. If anyone has any thoughts to add, uh, feel free to, to, to chime in. But that's I think what I think. Hey Sandy, I think I think the benefit of a of a guild now is you kind of understand the structure. You know, there's so much to learn. You, you start to learn with synergy through others, and you start to get a plan. And and you know, some people just want to build ships, and that's great. Some people just want to transport cargo, and that's great. And I really don't see how you get ahead as a solo person. I mean, I'm sure some people with the perseverance will do it, but. It just seems like if you want to get a part of the game, and the game is happening in discords and between guilds as we speak, and if you want to really get a full feel for the whole experience, you got to be there. Yeah, you do. Um, you need to. Yeah, my man. Hey, what's <laughs> yeah, what's up, Sansi? Um, I didn't get to say hi to you, but um, what's up, everybody in the audience? Um, this is pretty cool. Hippo, thank you for uh, doing this. This is this is pretty awesome. Um, so I'm Moonman Customs. I go by Moonman, operations officer uh, for the Final Frontier. But I wanted to add to this conversation. Um, so when it comes to uh, you know you guys out there in the audience or anybody listening that is possibly looking for a, a team or a DAC, um, you know to 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 be a part of, I, I think patience is really key. But you also need to, just like Santia said, and and others have said, you also need to be interacting with the community and really building those relationships because that's a big part of this game. Um, we all know that. But I will say to people that might be a little bit fearful or in intimidated by you know, what the DAX are doing right now, and if you're looking at Star Atlas chat, or maybe you've joined a couple of DAX just to see what they're doing inside of the discords, and it can mm -hmm. be very intimidating. Um, but I think it's a, it's a good thing to have patience. Um, you know, I found this game um, beginning of August, um, so it's really, it really wasn't that long ago. Um, but, you know, I waited a month and a half before I ended up joining Final Frontier. And it's actually funny because, you know, Atlas Theory put up a video or interview with uh, Ardo. And uh, that's how I found Final Frontier. So one thing I did do during that month and a half, though, was I was super active in the Discord. Um, you know, and I just made relationships. I've, you know, talked to different DAC leaders before joining a DAC and just just interacted with people, you know, just got my name out there in the community and just made good relationships and, and was myself. That's the big mm -hmm. thing too. Um, you know, we all are behind profile pictures and uh, Discord names, but it doesn't mean that you have to become somebody different, you know, just be yourself. And I think that's what people appreciate the most. Um, but communication, and uh, patience, I think, is going to be a really big thing if it when it comes to looking for a DAC. But don't be intimidated. There's a lot going on right now, but I think everybody will say in the Star Atlas community that we're extremely early. We're extremely early. There is um, a lot of years ahead of us. So that's how I kind of look at that situation or that discussion. Absolutely. And I just want to say, I think it's really cool because I know like a lot of people are looking at the game like for in-game like economic opportunity. But I think it's really cool, too, because I know Moon Man, you've act there's actually like a crossover into like in real life economic opportunity, right? Because um, I know that you started making like clothing and stuff for Final Frontier. And I just think that that's 
really awesome and I don't I think that maybe that's something that not a lot of people are really looking at like all the different outlets for economic opportunity from this project yeah 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 thank you um yeah no we I was really excited to do that um I know the team was really excited to do that and uh it's one of those things for me and I think a lot of you know Ardo I know is this way that's a big reason why I'm a part of this DAC um I know Atlas Theory is this way some of you other guys haven't really got to speak with you but um, the people that I have and Asante as well, you two hippo, is we love putting um, the community first. And so being able to do something like merch for the team and give the community be, um, you know, back uh, some gear that they can finally wear out in public and represent outside of social media, um, it was a really cool thing and we're still doing that right now. We got plenty more drops to come, but yeah, I mean, this, the metaverse and the, real, and, and the real world, you know, those are two things that are gonna blend in the future. And it's almost going to be, um, you know, very hard to tell what's what. Um, I think that's the future, yeah. the future that we're moving into. But yeah, no, so much, so much potential for people to make money inside of the game, but also create, um, you know, outside revenue. Absolutely. Um, so I just recently added Deep, is it Deep Profits? And I know that you were saying that you guys were yep. part of the alliance with Final Frontier. Is that right? Uh, yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're actually part of the Interstellar Alliance as well. Um, okay, cool. The, uh, Christian reached out to to me on day one and said, hey, it looks like you're starting a, a group and, you know, th this is what we're up to. And I, I really, uh, really connected with him and kind of their vision. And I just want to echo what everyone else is saying about being a small fish in a big pond is probably going to be pretty dangerous. So... So we right away started looking for alliances and the Interstellar Alliance was um, the one that we chose. And um, yeah, I mean, we've been we've been busy behind the scenes building our community. I think um, I, just, I just recognize that this is about the people right now and it's not, not so much about the numbers. I think um, I think that it's pretty cool that, that we've got hundreds and thousands of people that are registering it's about finding those people that you get along with and, mm -hmm. and, and building building stuff with them. So, um, you know, we, we, we started out as uh, a subgroup of, a, of a, trading, a trading group, like we trade crypto. And, um, and it's kind of grown into this, this huge thing and snowballed. And um, a, cu a couple of the tools, like I'm a software developer by trade. So um, a couple of the tools that we're building right now, um, the first one is like a a fleet visualization tool. And uh, so we just launched a Metaplex market on our website, deepprofits.org. And mm -hmm. you can go there and um, you can connect with us. And we, we have a number of artists in our guild that will create a, uh, a token for you. And then you mint that token and you distribute it to the users that have starships in your in your guild. And um, this, this tool that I've built will tally up all the ships that are in that group and display them on a dashboard so that you can you know flex your fleet to your friends or try and coordinate with other guilds which uh you know which fleets are going to have cargo ships and which ones are going to have fighters and and this and that so that that's actually in beta testing right now and um, anybody who is a guild leader that wants to try that out can hit me up and i will um mint some tokens for you and, oh that's uh, awesome yeah so um and then the second tool um that we're building is um for, specifically for artists to try and get their um, their artwork seen, and um, it, it's a redeemable NFT uh, product that we're working on. So uh, the artists will um, be creating these redeemable NFTs. So more on that later. But uh, yeah, that, that's it for now. Awesome. Cool. Great. That, that's what I was saying. For example, we have like going back to the conversation of. If you want to join a guild, you you need to take your time because as you can see, as you can listen right now, there are a lot of different guilds with different uh, lore and orientations that it, it's going, to, it's like, it's like real life. You need to find the group that you identify with and, and go there. For example, we have the new Hollywood here. We have uh, the profits with it, which is focusing more on, on on trading we have the final frontier and it's it's a lot of there, there's a lot of 
variety for, for a person to join and to, to see that it is just growing more and more every day and we love to see it. I know that we have also Dreaming Dragon and Lloyd here from the club. They haven't speak yet. Yes, hello. Hey, hello. Lloyd. Hello, hello, hey, hello. Hey, Lloyd. Hi, we can hear you guys. We can hear you, yeah. Okay, great. First time well, I hear your voice, Lloyd, I think. <laughs> yes, finally, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, can thanks I for say, setting I, this up, Ash. Absolutely. I just want to say, I think it's really awesome that you guys are putting a call out to like all the female gamers out there. I don't think that a lot of people realize like how large of a community that really is. Mm. And I just think that it's it's really great if you guys to do that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, it'd be foolish not to really because um, they represent it's almost half of the gaming population in, in the US and Asia. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we want to be encouraging female gamers to join us for sure. Um, yeah, and yeah, like I say, it's just just foolish not to have open arms to, to that community. Absolutely. Um, and uh, Ogie, yeah. Ogie did a, um, one of our members, Ogie, did an interview with Stacey's, who's our new female team leader. And one of the things that she brought up in the interview was how she had, um, you know, she spent her life gaming and she's left a lot of um, lobbies crying from the abuse that she took in those lobbies from various people and gamers and whatnot. And um, there will be none of that going on in the club. There'll be zero tolerance for that. Um, so everybody will be welcome. Everybody will feel safe. And we'll all grow together, whether you're, you know, a huge investor or you just want to play the game and have fun. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, so that's cool. you might have heard uh, Dreaming Dragon on the town hall last time. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, he, he covered a lot of our uh, main points really on there. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd take the opportunity to say hello on, uh, on this call. Um, and I'm, I'm from the UK, as you might tell. Um, Co-founder of our guild, The Club. Um, my background is marine engineering, uh, shipping. And I, I trained as an engineering officer on um, uh, cruise ships. Um, gained my license for that. Uh, now I'm just waiting for my airdropped captain's license. Uh, <laughs> so I can... Uh, fly through the stars yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, I was lucky to, to stumble on Star Atlas, really. Um, I don't exactly know where it came from, but some pop-up, I'm sure, came up and I thought, I'll take a look at that. And uh, that was just before the Rebirth event, which was great for me. Um, and it basically just answers everyone's, well, every gamer's dream, I think, is uh, Oh, I can play games and earn a living. Yeah, I think I'll I'll have a look at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, uh, I I bought a few posters. Uh, should have bought more. Um, <laughs> obviously, in hindsight. Um, and I've been in the Discord for quite a while, building up a good history of, of all the conversations going on. Um, and then Vlad, our founder. Um, he approached me to say, can you help help to set up this uh, this guild? Um, so we've been working very hard since then, really, just uh, getting a good community together. Um, I think we're lucky enough, really, to be one of only four holders to have all of the Rebirth posters, which I think gives us a, a very good leg up in the game. Yeah, I think yeah. that's impressive, for sure. <laughs> You also gave a call to to Wales to join the the club. Yeah, we yes, yeah, we've been focusing our attention on um, attracting you know Wales large Star Atlas asset holders, um, and that's uh, through our referral rewards program. Um, we're making available ten thousand US dollars worth of of uh, Star Atlas assets. Um, in the hope that we can refer some uh, some whales to our club, um, you know that again would just add to our asset pool and uh, and give us a, a leg up. 
um, and also that should help to enable our scholarship programs eventually. Um, you know, just waiting for a bit more information on that one, really. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, and that and that just ties into our our mission statement, which is, amongst other things, basically, we want to promote the uh, the social and financial inclusion of all. Um, so, you know, the, the shout out to female gamers, um, the scholarships, and um, Oggy, our Indonesian ambassador, he's uh, he's helping us with the Indonesian community. He's going to help to translate some um, town halls uh, and, and, you know, bring that community over to us. And yeah, lo lots of other things going on really in the background. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep posting and uh, keep you updated, I'm sure. Uh, we've, we've also got our, our verified member roles that I should have mentioned, um, which gives us an insight into our uh, collective assets, which is uh, a good bit of intel we've got. So uh, today we, we had a quick look. We've got eight uh, guardians in our fleet now, which uh, we're very proud of. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, that's huge. I guess, uh, join, join the club, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have, yeah, I have yeah. two quick things to um, add. One that's very important is my dragon was actually drawn by an artist in Norway, and I don't know what the qualifications are for the beer beta testing, but that seems like it should be a strong one. Um, <laughs> and the other is, um, you know, I just faced it because all I can think about is beer now. Um, <laughs> well, that might actually happened. qualify you enough, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, I, I don't know. It had something to do with what Lloyd said, and I just completely spaced it, so if I remember. <laughs> You're um, in, man. You're in. That's, that was the proof that we needed. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. I spaced it. Okay. So I have one thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> no problem. No problem. We also have Banana Dao here. It's a new Dao. It says to Atlas. I would love to hear more about Banana Dao. <laughs> I think, uh, I just heard of you like uh, this week or the past one, I don't know. So I would love to hear more about you guys. Yeah, Santi, so we're we're pretty new. Um, and I just want to start, I want to thank Ash for, for putting this together. And uh, I tried to get to get connected to this right when we started and I was driving through some mountains and dropping signal like crazy. So I apologize for dropping in and out at the start, but very glad to be here. Um, but yeah, so Banana Dow is, is very new. Um, we're about three weeks old or so we started um, we started very uh, very quietly uh, we haven't really you know done a lot of marketing or publicity uh, yet but we do have over 200 people in our discord and and uh, we have a really fun community that's been started but uh, I, I personally have been studying and keeping up with star Atlas for months now um, and you know I, I have a core group of close friends, some of them in the audience here, Kaz, uh, Old Greg, uh, Odin, so some of the, the guys that are in here. And we have a crypto group that we've had for years. You know, we've been in the space five, six years or so. Um, and, you know, we were looking around, we're avid gamers, we were looking around for, for a guild that felt like a good fit for us. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of good ones, but we just didn't feel like anyone was really doing it the way that we wanted it to be done. Uh, so that's kind of how Banana Dow started. And uh, Banana originally was going to be kind of a parody to Apple as like one of the biggest companies on planet Earth. Um, so Banana is, is one of the biggest companies in the booster sector. <laughs> um, but That's we, great. Uh, we're kind of, uh, our, we kind of have like a lore developing around it now um, from, from our community. And we have myself and Kaz are, are big in the DJ Nape Academy. Um, so we're, we're involved there. We are DJ apes. So, uh, <laughs> we've kind of started to create a little lore around our community and it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. That's cool, man. We all love lore. <laughs> that's, that's what makes things interesting, man. How, yep, absolutely. How, how about a banana mafia? <laughs> banana mafia. <laughs> yeah. He tweeted at us, uh, banana. <laughs> I, I was, uh, yeah, our, uh, uh, yeah, I, he tweeted at us about that. It was funny, but yeah, no, we've we've just been having a lot of fun. We're on every town hall. We're uh, 
you know, we are investor backed, so we aren't just a small group of people that are here to do it, do it tiny, right? You know, we are here for very, uh, uh, we, ha we have a lot of aspirations and we, we do have a very strong business plan. We have uh, intention to make strong connections with other guilds. I've, I've uh, you know, I'm, I'm reaching out to people, talking to people almost every day and any guild leaders here that I haven't spoken with yet, I'd really love to, to you know, get on a call or, or chat back and forth with you at some point and just kind of strengthen those connections. But um, yeah, we are, uh, we're here and you know, we're, we're planning on building something really big. So we're excited to be a part of it. Great, great. Uh, you said you're doing things in your own way, like different. Uh, what's that? Expand a little bit more on that. Yeah, so you know, we we wanted to we wanted to treat it like a game in the sense that we want everyone to feel welcome, like they can come in and have fun. But at the same time, you know, I've been in business and and economic macroeconomics for over a decade, and you know, from from the the viewpoint of like Michael said so many times. Uh, you know, the, the, the position that Star Atlas is in to transform the world economy and really break a lot of, uh, you know, sociological, uh, socioeconomic uh, chains in smaller countries, like the, the opportunity that we have to provide a large member base with a safe and uh, reliable way to create real world income for themselves. You know, we're looking at it much more than just a game in that sense. You know, we saw a lot of guilds that we felt like we were more just here to have fun, which is, it's fine, you know, we're here to have fun too, but we really want to provide people with a meaningful life-changing income. So we're treating this like a corporation. We're treating it like a business. Uh, we're running it for profit and uh, we are trying to help others generate that same meaningful profit for themselves as well. Great, great. Hey, um, what's, what's up, guys? Thanks, JP. Um, I'm, uh, um, uh, I'm gonna thank you guys for uh, hosting this, um, hosting this town hall, I guess you can call it. Um, I'm Kaz. I'm one of the uh, one of the other other founders of uh, Banana Dow, and I just kind of want to emphasize, like, uh, we've kind of been in the metaverse for years already, you know. So this was just like a natural progression for us because um, a lot of the guys in our group, um, we kind of met. Just you know, through online, like you know, discords. There was you know, Telegram groups back in the days um, on the, in the 2017 bull market, and we've all just been kind of you know, uh, riding the waves together all these years. And um, uh, in the real world, um, all of us, you know, uh, we, we've become friends in the real world through through crypto. And we we all come from like different kind of backgrounds, um, whether it's banking, um, lawyers. Uh, traders, you know, military. So we've got like all sorts of um, all sorts of background and um, funding for what we're doing over here. And um, it's just like a collective of different, uh, a lot of brain power. You know what I mean? So we're we're you know we're trying to have a little bit of fun with the name bananas, apes, all of that. But um, we have a lot of we we have a lot of business uh, business ideology behind us, and that's how we all become friends over over the years and the plans just to you know grow that within you know within the metaverse and you know get as much people involved uh with us as possible you know uh we're not looking to uh have too much conflict with other people i think uh, that's why we went with the you know, booster um uh, their faction i think uh as a as a business base now uh we want to have the best kind of relationship with everyone and you know just just ride the wave yeah, together, just, you know what I mean? I just want to say what Final Frontier put together, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the release they had last night is just incredible. Like, I, I was talking to my group about, you know, I wonder how long it's going to take for something like a United Nations type thing to form, right? Where you have, like, that kind of environment in the metaverse, and surely, like, a, a week or two later, Final Frontier comes out. So, um, I think that's just an incredible initiative. And we'd really love to be a part of it and, you know, kind of promote that kind of peaceful um, growth in the metaverse. But yeah, uh, hats off to Final Frontier for that. That's incredible. Great. I don't know if there are any comments from any other participants. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think I'd like yeah, to say, one. or I guess. Go ahead. Yeah. Oops. 
Hey, hello. Hello. Hey, all right. Um, I just sorry, my phone glitched. No worries. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, more more targeted towards uh, like Star Atlas as a whole, and Star Atlas as a uh, like a technology and an investment. Um, so so my back and uh, asset management and portfolio construction, and I actually worked at uh, one of the top performing crypto hedge funds. Uh, started working there in uh, 2019 and one of the or, or basically like the sole thing that we looked at whenever we were you know evaluating a different crypto, uh, you know a crypto asset was uh, adoption metrics right and so it, you know if I was if I was looking at Solana or if I was looking at Ethereum or whatever um, I, I would be looking to see you know uh, who's building on these platforms, how many people are building on these platforms, and how many people are using the applications on the platforms. And so whenever I came across uh, Star Atlas and I looked at the guild landscape in particular, that's when I knew that there was already adoption here, right? So the, so the, <laughs> the game doesn't even exist, but but these, these DAX, these guilds are the applications that are going to be on top of the Star Atlas, right? And so I think that, you know, from even from an investment standpoint, if you don't plan to play the game, uh, Polis already has fundamental value. I, I, I think there's a lot of uh, crypto assets that are extremely overvalued. There's a lot of speculation in the market. Uh, but regarding Star Atlas in particular, um, I, I think the foundation and the fundamentals are already there. And, and so I just wanted to say that. Great. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. I would love to add one more thing, if that's okay. Yeah, for sure. Totally. Um, so, hey, everybody out there in the audience, thank you for uh, showing up. I, I got one one request, though, or one thing to send out to everybody. Um, so being with Final Frontier, um, I don't know how much I can release. I don't want to release, release an alpha, but I will put this out there. If there's anybody that, you know, is a book writer, storyteller, um, you know, just a really good person that is uh you know interested in coming up with fiction novels non-fiction novels if anybody's out there that does that please dm me um we're doing something special so i would love to throw that out there to everybody in the audience and oh, yeah i'm, that's, that's, I'm intrigued <laughs> yeah <laughs> i yeah. loved all the fan fiction that was going on <clears throat> like i think mm -hmm. it'd be really cool if we could continue that in some way so I'm, yep. I'm going to be looking forward to that, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so I'll throw that out there. And uh, yeah, I welcome everybody in my DMs. So yeah. And okay. leaders, uh, leaders of the other decks. I would love to talk to you guys. So yeah, this is great. Cool. And then I think Dreaming Dragon, you said you, you remembered? I remembered. I remember. Right. Okay, so it was, uh, <laughs> you guys were talking about a reason to join a guild now. And I like, I mean, everybody that's spoken has really said it, right? Like if you want to, create something if you've been dying to create something um like it's just amazing what's going on here you know i've been gaming since what like 1983 so i'm, I'm getting pretty old but the but i've seen like all these waves of gaming and everything and there's never been anything like this like the closest thing was when we went from 2d games to 3d games with quake and like that was a revolution and that changed everything and this is much bigger and much stronger and it's it feels like like everybody's saying it's like it just overwhelms you and you start down the rabbit hole and you can't stop so um mm -hmm. the, the a big reason to join the guild now is that you don't any guild is you don't have to you know figure out what it is you want to do exactly if i mean you, if you have an idea you want to be an artist or you've always wanted to try this or you've always wanted to try that you're going to be welcome at one of these guilds and, and they're going to help you and encourage you to be the best you i mean it's it's amazing really how all the different guilds are doing that, you know, including the club, I'll throw that in, but um, it's really amazing. And so, yeah, if you join now, you can really be a part of building something that maybe we are all building the metaverse and wouldn't that be amazing too, you know? So. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Like, I love how there's, there's, there's literally something for everybody, no matter what your skill set is. Um, I don't think I think a lot of people don't realize that I think they just think that it's about gaming but once you actually like get in and get involved with everybody you see that there's just so much more that's available to you there's like no matter what your skill set is there's there's an opportunity for you here 
Yeah, 100%. 100%. I want to to give a call yeah. to everyone listening to get involved. I, I feel like if you're interested, uh, just get involved, find a guild, or even if you don't find a guild, get involved in the community, make yourself a name, and start engaging in everything that's happening. I'm sure you will have a lot of fun. And we are set, we are funding, we are setting the basis for what's coming in the next 10 years right now mm -hmm. so it's it's an it's an interesting time right now hey um yeah I, i'm want to say congratulations to all the new organizations that that just formed and um i'm super excited for everything that's got going on here today it's the, the growth of this is just astronomical and uh the attention that Star Atlas has, has grown in a short amount of time. It's just been um, absolutely amazing. And hoping that people see that this is gonna redefine everything we've thought about um, how life can operate absolutely. with a borderless economy and, and just socioeconomics in general. Um, and uh, Banana Dow, nice to meet you. Uh, I know we had a chance to say hi earlier and um, but in, in, in terms of, um, of those that, that did join uh, the UMO, um, again, this is, this is not all the credit to Final Frontier. Um, this, this was actually a, a big dream for Interstellar Alliance, uh, who was actually at the, the, the helm of this. And uh, Kristen has done an outstanding job with the work that, that he's put behind the scenes. So I, I just want to clarify that for, for everybody in the metaverse that this is not something that was uh, composed uh, purely by Final Frontier. This, is, this has been um, uh, a really big effort and uh, Kristen has, has put in a lot of legwork on this uh, for this all to happen. So uh, my hat goes off, off to him for just the, the the level of effort he's he's put into being able to assemble us all. Great. Great. Christian is Christian Dragnell, the founder of, of the Interest Alliance, just in case someone doesn't know who he is. He has been here since the early days. I remember that when I joined this the start of the server he was already there. So yeah, big shout out to him. Yeah, from everything I've heard, he's been a really big like contributor to to the space yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 no doubt. So I don't know if anyone has any closing thoughts of if, or if we are closing. I need to jump like in five minutes. But yeah, no, that's you, fine. It's you been can continue. I don't know. What's the idea? I mean, it's it's been an hour, like <laughs> so. I mean, <laughs> yeah. If anybody has anything else, like closing thoughts to say, that's that's fine. Um, but if we want to close on that, I mean, I think, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to throw this together really quick last minute. I want to thank everybody for coming. Like it's been, it's been really great to just sit and actually like chat with some of you guys. You know, it's, it's different than like chatting on Twitter or on Discord. It's nice to be able to actually hear your voices and talk to you. Um, so yeah, like it's just, thank you for coming. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, well, thanks for setting it up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no, thanks, thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks. Let's do this more really often. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I think it'd be really great to do these more regularly, um, just because it, it helps bring all of the, you know, like it's been mentioned several times, we are kind of pioneering a, a metaphors and we're building it together. And I think it'd be great for some of the leaders of that initiative to get together more often like this and just have open conversation. Yeah, but, I mean, that sounds great. I'm, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> so, yeah, right. yeah. Just, just to close, again, uh, I, I, I would like to give a call to everyone listening to get involved. Start uh, networking, start to know people inside the Toronto's Metaverse. We are here for a long, long ride. So, yeah, start to get involved in the early days. And Alpha, the mini games dropping tomorrow. No. <laughs> no. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's still All no right. time on that, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
But either way, it's good talking to you, all, you guys. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Hifto, and uh, thank you, everybody. It was great talking with you. Awesome. Well, everybody have a wonderful weekend. Thanks again for stopping by. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.